So maintenance therapy is when you give an extended course of a drug over time after someone has gotten initial combination chemotherapy. So the most common example would be rituxan maintenance. So for instance, a patient gets either single agent rituxan or rituxan plus chemotherapy, completes a course of that, is in remission, either partial or complete remission, and then goes on to get additional doses of rituxan as maintenance for a prolonged period of time. I think most typically people go on for two years uh, and some of the original studies in follicular lymphoma looked at two years so there are some other studies in mantle cell uh, where patients go on to receive it indefinitely but we don't have a lot of long-term follow-up in those patients um, so I think many people would stop at two or perhaps three years um, and not continue indefinitely. I think you really have to personalize it for the patient and look at the disease. Uh, you know, I think with mantle cell lymphoma, um, I, for instance, uh, in an older patient, am much more likely to give maintenance for tuxin um, than I might be in follicular lymphoma because I know man mantle cell lymphoma has a shorter natural history. It tends to be a more aggressive disease, and there's data to suggest that we may really significantly prolong remissions. In follicular lymphoma, because it's a disease um, that people live with for many years, and because we know we can reach treat people down the line with uh, rituxan either as a single agent or in combination. I think many of us are sort of moving a bit away from doing maintenance rituxan in that particular disease. But I think you have to weigh the risks and benefits with an individual patient. There are some patients who say, I want to be in remission as long as I possibly can be. I, I would rather come in and get the maintenance and then if I don't tolerate it or you know for whatever reason, then we can stop. So I, I think it's a discussion that you have to have with every patient. And some patients would say, well, I'd rather be away from having to come in every two to three months to get a dose of rituxan. I'd rather spread out my visits and really you know, spend my time doing other things. And, and there are some patients who clearly will state that. So I, I think you have to really, the main question is what are the risks and benefits of doing it or not and figuring out how those balance out for a given individual. I think we're going to start to see a lot more studies using these novel um, drugs uh, for maintenance therapy. So people who have had initial treatment, say a mantle cell, and we, we now have a brutinib, I'm, I'm sure we're going to see a, a number of studies looking at, well, can that keep people in remission longer where we know this disease is going to come back, and when it comes back, it can be more difficult to treat. So I, I think with these new oral drugs um, and some of these novel antibodies as well, we're going to start to see more maintenance um, studies. You don't sign up for a course and you're done. You have to go through all the doses. It's something that you need to reevaluate as you're going along. And there's certainly people I've started it in and decided, all right, the white count's too low, I think it's related, or this patient's getting recurrent sinusitis or other infections, it's time to stop. In the relapse refractory setting, people are more beaten up, and, and I think in that setting, I'm probably a little bit less enthusiastic about giving a long course of, of maintenance because I'm not sure it's really going to have a huge impact. But certainly, if you have patients who are older and may not tolerate next-line therapies very well, it may be something that, uh, that you would want to do, um, hoping that you would get a benefit and avoid you know, next-line therapy. There are some patients who say, I had a great response, I'm in remission, and I think now that we're using, there is some evidence that if you have a negative PET scan after your initial therapy with follicular lymphoma, that maintenance may not be of benefit to you, and I think that that may weigh into patients um, you know, deciding whether they want to put up with coming in frequently. There are certainly those patients who feel strongly that they want to do everything possible you know, to have control over when the disease comes back, and I think they feel that getting maintenance rituxan may afford them that.